Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. So there might be things down here that you could get by with, just like the baby eaglet. But honey, if you want to come up here. Pruning, pruning always precedes new growth. You ever feel like, God, you're just going a little bit too far here, you know? I mean, you're going to leave me anything? And I mean, sometimes I've looked at it. I mean, Dave had somebody come in and prune a tree that we had in our front yard one time. And I mean, when I came home from work, I, I said, you have destroyed and completely ruined our tree. I mean, there just was not much left. And I mean, he said, you watch and see. And it wasn't very long. And that was so much better looking than what it had been before. So when we're being dealt with, when we're being pruned, sometimes we're like, what are you doing? I don't understand. This hurts. It's not fair. But oh, you're going to be so much better. I can honestly tell you that I have never received a promotion from God in any area of my life. And by that, I mean gone from one level to another. I've never received one without God having to deal with me about something on this level that I could not take to this level with me. See, there, are th there, there may be some attitudes and behaviors that you're getting by with now, but if you want to come up to that next level, then those things are going to have to go. I like to say sometimes that at every stop, somebody gets off the bus and somebody gets on the bus. So every place you stop, if you want to go to the next place, somebody's going to get off and somebody's going to get on. Amen? Now, let's talk about eagles. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. It doesn't say they'll flap around the yard like chickens. I've got a message I'm working on called, are you a flapper or a flyer? <laughs> Do you know how to soar with the eagles or are you still flapping around the chicken yard just stirring up dirt and never getting off the ground? Well, little baby eaglets are so well taken care of, just like little baby Christians. And... Mama Eagle just makes them the best nest. I mean, it's full of feathers and just little twigs and leaves, and she collects all kinds of stuff, and this nest is just, it's just a wonderful little nest. And little baby just lays in the nest. She gets hungry, however, you know, whatever eagles do, and mama flies off and gets some food and brings it back and feeds it to baby eagle, and she's just so sweet and so happy. <laughs> Just like a little baby Christian, you know. I mean, if you want somebody to pray for you, get somebody that's just been saved because God will do almost anything for them just for a short period of time, you know. And then, you know, you're kind of like in the honeymoon. It's like, oh, oh, this is so wonderful. And then after a little while, you're like, what? And so when it becomes time for the baby eagle to fly, which God intends for all of us to fly, amen, to soar with the eagles. It would be nice if mama would just come and say, well, little baby, it's time to get out of the nest and fly. Well, that little baby eaglet is not going to get out of that nest. She's got a good thing going there. She ain't about to leave. So, and this is true what I'm telling you. So the mother eagle begins day after day to pull things out of the nest and get rid of them. The comfy things, the feathers, the pieces of foam rubber she's collected from off the ground, the bouncy, soft, cuddly stuff. And pretty soon the little eagle is left with nothing but the base of the nest, which happens to be made out of thorns. Some rough old branch that's strong and sturdy, but not very comfortable. So. Let's just say for the sake of talking about it, by then, little baby eagles climbed up and kind of looking over the side and thinking, well, I don't know. This is not so comfortable anymore. Maybe it is better out there. 
So mama does the baby a big favor. She comes and swoops, picks her up, flies up in the air, and drops her. <laughs> right before she hits the ground, mama swoops down. Oh, mama, you love me after all. Come on, is anybody getting this? Yeah. Takes her right back up. <laughs> and that process is repeated, repeated, repeated until she finally begins to. And that's what God wants from us. You know, in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says that God removes props out from under us. Let me ask you a question. What's got you propped up? See, God wants us to be rooted and grounded in the Word and rooted and grounded in the love of God so that nothing can steal our confidence and and although we can feel fear, that fear doesn't stop us, that we're bold enough in God to keep going forward, and that even if our best friend turns against us, it, it may hurt us, but we've still got Jesus in our life. Come on now. What does it take to keep you propped up? What does it take to keep you strong in the Lord? Is it a group of Christian friends that you have that make you feel good about yourself? Is it a certain job that you have that makes you feel good about yourself? Let me tell you a little story. After teaching home Bible studies for five years, the second phase of my ministry was I worked at a church in my city for five years. And I learned a lot there, went through a lot of good times, a lot of difficult times. Uh, I kind of found out that you're not really fit to be in authority till you know how to come under authority, and that wasn't necessarily a real easy thing for me. So can I just throw out to you that if you're waiting for a promotion into your own thing, but you don't know how to come under the authority where you're at, well, whatever, you can do with that what you want to. Um, and so God began to deal with me that he wanted me to leave my job there and start this ministry. Well, I was very frightened, and the word we kept hearing was, take your ministry, go north, south, east, and west, but the problem was nobody knew me north, south, east, or west. I mean, I had a nice little ministry in St. Louis, and I was on one local radio station, but that was it. And so, where am I supposed to go, north, south, east, and west? Well, you know, when God really wants you to do something, if you just keep dragging your feet, you can get so miserable inside. Anybody know what it's like to have God just deal with you and deal with you and deal with you and deal with you? And, you know, things that I once liked, like staff meetings and group gatherings and stuff, I, I, I mean, I started just, I hated everything I was doing there. I dreaded it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go to church anymore. It was just like, Bleh. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, so finally, long story short, I don't have time to tell it all. God got through to me, and so I left my job with a dented desk and a calculator and started a meeting in North St. Louis, East St. Louis, West St. Louis, and South St. Louis, one on each end of town. God said, go north, south, east, and west. And I, like a little kid, just tried to do the best that I could. Now, however, I found out something that I didn't know while I had that job. You know, sometimes when you have something, you don't really know how much you're depending on it until God shakes it and moves it. What is your confidence in? Will you still be confident if you lose your friends? Can you still be confident in God if you make a decision to go on and grow with God and you get rejected by your current group? Can you handle that and still go on with God or are you going to cave in and go back to being a people pleaser? Come on, I'm only talking to people today that want to go on with God. I'm not talking to anybody that wants to remain a baby eaglet. I'm talking to people today that are making eagle applications. Amen? Do you want to fly or do you want to flap? It's up to you. So, you have to keep in mind that when I worked at the church, I was uh, 
you know, fairly popular there. I mean, I did most of the preaching when the pastor was gone. I was an associate pastor. I taught in Bible college. I had my ladies' meeting once a week that several hundred people came to, and that was a pretty nice event in town. I had a parking place out front with my name on it. <laughs> Boy, we like seeing our name. Come on now. I had a seat on the front row that had my name on it. They put out a sign every service, Joyce Meyer, Dave Meyer. He didn't sit in my seat. <laughs> I had an office with my name on the door. I had a name plate on my desk. My name was in the bulletin every week as one of the staff. You see, I was important. <laughs> Come on, is anybody home today? And so when I left, my name wasn't on a parking place anymore. I had to go find one like everybody else. My name wasn't on a seat. I had to just sit wherever I could. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't invited to the group gatherings. I wasn't invited to the different special things the leadership did. So when I would go to church on Sunday morning, I felt so out of place, so like nothing. And see, that's not what God wants for you. And he didn't want that for me. He stripped away or dealt with me long enough until I walked away from all of that, because God was elevating me to what has now become this, but <laughs> I don't know if we realize sometimes how tempted we are to run back to what we had rather than pressing on to what is ahead of us. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. All right, many of you right now are in what I call the middle. You've had a beginning, you're headed somewhere, but you're in the middle. Don't give up in the middle. And let me tell you, my meetings were smaller after I left the church. <laughs> I worked harder. I was alone a lot. And from looking at it, I thought, this is a promotion. I mean, I wanted to run back to what I had. How many women... keep running back to some guy <laughs> that talks to you like you're a dog, puts you down, maybe even beats you up, uses you, abuses you, and you get away, and then you get lonely, it gets hard, he gives you a few sweet words, And you run back. Listen, I want you to stay anywhere that God wants you to stay. And I don't advocate running away from hard things. But you are worth more than having somebody beat you up and abuse you and take advantage of you. And you listen to me. You are not helping that person by letting them do that. If you don't want to do it for yourself, at least do it for them. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. You have got value. You have no idea how many times I almost ran back to that job which was an open door for me. I could have went back at any time. But I'm so glad that I did the harder thing. It scares me sometimes to think about what we give up by not pressing through. You know, Philippians 3, Paul said, one thing I do, it's my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and pressing toward the upward call. Pressing toward the upward call. 
you know, there was a time in my life when God dealt with me very strongly about some things he wanted me to do with my parents. And I didn't understand at the time. Why would God ask me to spend money and take care of two people that really never did anything for me? Buy my parents a house, get them furniture, take care of them, make sure they get their groceries, make sure their grass is mowed, pay for them to be in assisted living care eventually. And I don't know, why, why, why in the world would God ask me to do something like that? It just wasn't fair. But you know what? God does that with us all the time. <laughs> Long story short, I, I can't explain it to you, but something amazing happened in our ministry after I finally totally let go of that bitterness and totally let go of that resentment and was willing to walk in real love with my father and we grew. I'm trying to tell you that God has got promotions for you, but there's some things that you cannot take to the next level. You know why? New level, new devil. So there might be things down here that you could get by with, just like the baby eaglet. But honey, if you want to come up here, there's something that's got to get off that bus before you go to this stop. Amen? I taught home Bible studies for five years, and then I felt like God was telling me to lay those things down. And He said, behold, I do a new thing. <laughs> Ooh, I was excited. Yeah, praise the Lord. My dream's going to come true now. And... God's idea of a new thing was for one year, I did absolutely nothing. He just kind of put me up on a shelf. <laughs> you know, have you ever gone from bearing a little bit of fruit to bearing no fruit? So I was bearing a little bit of fruit, and then I was bearing no fruit, but then eventually I bore abundant fruit. Okay, well, let me, let me tell you about the little fruit. <laughs> See, I was teaching 25 people in my living room. And now, of course, you know, I get the privilege of teaching people all over the world every day. So from 25, and in between, I worked at that church and, you know, a lot of different things. But I had some things in me here that couldn't go here. <laughs> I had some fears, some insecurities. Uh, I spent too much time comparing myself with other people. And God wanted me to be me, and God wants you to be you. God's not looking for a copy of anybody. He wants a brand new original. Yeah. Amen, do you hear me? A brand new original. You might as well be yourself because everybody else is taken. And you might as well learn to like yourself and appreciate yourself. You can even love yourself in a balanced way because everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> so I've heard this story, and I believe it's true. I'm not a botanist, but I think the story is true. A person who, say, has an orchard of peach trees... You know, everything starts with a seed, so you plant a seed, and eventually you get a tree, and you wait for fruit, and so you've waited and waited for fruit. Now, just relate this to your own life. You've waited and waited for fruit. Now, all of a sudden, it's time, and so you, you see these little, tiny, cute, baby, fuzzy peaches come out on the branches. Oh, praise God, fruit. <laughs> but the orchard grower that is really smart goes and picks them all off and won't let them bloom that year. Because if he keeps them from bearing that little tiny fruit, then in a year or two, and maybe next year he does the same thing. Maybe the fruit's a little bigger next year, but he's like, no, still not what I'm after. So he 
plucks those off. I mean, if you were the tree, just think, you've got to be kidding. I mean, I have waited so long, and I have worked so hard, and I have stood here, and stood here, and waited and waited, and now I finally get peaches, and you're going to pick them off and throw them away? Now, you know, if you don't have any spiritual understanding, then you're not tracking with me at all. You're like, I mean, you're like, this woman has lost her mind. We've talked about everything from Dave being on the pot to throwing peaches away to... <laughs> <laughs> it ought to be illegal to have this much fun on Saturday morning. <laughs> but the orchard grower who does that, man, if he, if he can wait that out for two or three years, whew, man, the best, the biggest, the healthiest peaches you have ever seen in your life. Okay. So I got my little Bible study, and I'm, so I'm having little peaches. I got my little 25 people coming every week. We sit in the living room floor. I teach the Bible. They go home. They come back the next week. It was just so cute. It was just a sweet time in my life. And God said, okay, stop this. Behold, I do a new thing. And so far, the next year, I spent trying to be like my neighbor. And, you know, you probably heard these stories, so I'm not going to bore you by telling them all again. But she was Miss Arts and Crafts, and I was just like nothing like a normal woman. <laughs> I mean, you know, I wasn't that great at decorating. I mean, I'm the kind of person, I bring the furniture in, I put it there, it's going to be there 20 years from now. <laughs> you know, she's moving her furniture around all the time, and every month you walked in, her house looked like a brand new house. And... She mowed the grass, and she'd paint while her husband was gone, and she made her own plant hangers, and just did all kinds of stuff. And I couldn't even start the stupid lawnmower. And if Dave wants a button to stay on his shirt, he better sew it on himself because it ain't going to stay on if I do it. <laughs> but the devil started telling me. I said, the devil started telling me. You need to... Stop all this. I'm going to change the world stuff and just settle down and be a regular woman. <laughs> Come on, you need to be like everybody else. Anybody out there? So my neighbor started at me to learn how to sew, and she had a garden and thought I should have a garden, and <laughs> What a miserable, wretched year. <laughs> I wanted to be somewhere casting out a devil, and here I am trying to can tomatoes. <laughs> Could anybody have the courage to follow their heart? Yes. And man, if you're anointed to can tomatoes, go for it. It's not that there's anything wrong with that, but we can't be like everybody else. So anyway, the sewing didn't work out. That was crazy, and the garden didn't work out. It was time to can the tomatoes, and a bunch of bugs came in and ate holes in my tomatoes overnight. <laughs> she lived right next door. I mean, no further than from here to the other end of that platform, and they didn't eat her tomatoes. <laughs> and mine were destroyed. And I had even prayed over my tomatoes because I was a woman of faith. Come on now. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't get to go to Bible college. I, I just went to the school of the Holy Ghost. So... I called her. We were supposed to can that day, and I said, well... Our crops are ruined. She said, what are you talking about? I said, well, my tomatoes are full of black holes. And she went out and looked at hers and called me back. She said, mine are fine. And I went to God and I said, I, what is going on? I prayed over my tomatoes. And he said, I never told you to grow tomatoes. I have, I have no responsibility to protect your tomatoes. 
<laughs> Come on. <laughs> Maybe you're trying to grow your own version of tomatoes and it's not working out. Ooh, this is fun today. Maybe the thing you need to let go of this morning is this idea that you're not okay just being you. Come on, I said maybe you need to let go of self-hatred and self-rejection and being self-critical all the time. And maybe you need to realize today that God created you with his own hand in your mother's womb. He gave you your personality. He gave you your talents, your weaknesses. Let me tell you something. God wants you to be who you are, and you cannot go to the next level that God has for you until you decide that you are going to be yourself. Amen. It's time to let go of some stuff. Well, you know, God's timing is not always comfortable for us, but it is always right. We really need to learn to trust God. And what I like to say is let's trust God without borders. And if God is dealing with you to let something go in your life, then know that it's going to be best for you if you just do it. It may not feel good right now, but you will be thankful later. At least that's what I've experienced in my own life. and we're in the middle of Tanzania in a land where the Datoga people live. And my first visit here was over a year ago, and the conditions of what we saw here just absolutely broke Shelly and Mai's heart. There was no water. People would have to walk for hours and hours one way to get dirty water. There was no education. And so we started planning and, and asking, how can we make a difference in this? And so today, we're here, and we have just dedicated one of five wells that we've dug in this area. And these are not just wells. They're solar paneled with pumps, and they have reservoirs of 10,000 liters, and they will just change this whole community. And we've dedicated a primary school that will, will do grades one, two, three, four, five. So we've literally changed this entire community uh, here in Tanzania, and we just couldn't do it without you. So we're so grateful. The people are so appreciative. And we say thank you, and God bless you.